Hi, this is Ogi with 4K Shooters, and I'm at IBC 2018. I'm at the Blackmagic Design booth with Stuart, who's going to tell you all about their brand new Blackmagic RAW. Hi, nice to see you. Um, I think that you know a lot of people are asking us about Blackmagic RAW, and it's a, it's a big announcement for us. It's a big announcement for our current Ursa Mini Pro customers and future camera customers. Um, but I think that it's also a big announcement for the way in which we consider RAW and future users all around the world. I think. This is something quite special and something that we believe to, um, to potentially have a huge impact on the way in pe which people will interact with codex and interact with RAW specifically. Traditionally, when you work with a RAW codec, um, what you are working with there is, a, is something that's designed really at the acquisition point. So you're trying to retain as much information as you possibly can from the center of the camera, along with lens information in detail. But then when that gets into a post environment, that then becomes quite difficult to edit, difficult to manipulate and work with, because file sizes generally tend to be quite significant in size. The main reason for that being is that RAW is a 12-bit format, um, whereas traditional video codecs are 10-bit and 8-bit. So what Blackmagic has looked at is the whole workflow. We've not just looked at the acquisition side, we've also looked all the way through the post end as well. And what we started to work out was how could we actually retain that 12-bit raw codec through the entire workflow. So what we've been able to do is produce the Blackmagic raw codec, which not only has an incredible quality in terms of its visual representation of what it looks like, but also we've been able to develop that into the size of file that is similar to that that you would associate with a 10-bit or 8-bit file format. So it means speed, it means manipulation becomes very, very simple. Now, people say, well, how can you do that? How can you take a 12-bit file and ultimately make that work and operate like a traditional editing file? And the answer is, is that what we've done is that we've looked at the, the whole debayering and demosaicing process. And what we have said is that if we could take part of that processing point and actually place that into the camera, then what we might actually be able to do is accelerate that whole processing um, demosaicing um, path. So what we've actually done is what is traditionally a software um, processing part, the demosaic, we've partially accelerated that through the hardware within our camera, which means that by the time it reaches the software, half the work has already been done. Now, now what you've then got is that you've got that 12-bit codec, 12-bit raw file, that also is working with a file size that is in incredibly small comparative to what you would traditionally associate with RAW. Now, not only that, but because it's RAW, we are able to keep all of the, the data, all of the information that is, is required at lens level, but also as well, we've presented that with a sidecar file that's like a text file that has all of that metadata in, so you can actually go in at text level, and you can actually alter the parameters of that. But it doesn't stop there because another thing that we've actually done as well today is we've also made this available, the SDK available on our website, which means that any other software manufacturer out there can actually go and take that, that SDK and start to implement Blackmagic RAW into their own software. So this is completely free of charge. We're not charging a licensing fees. We're not charging upgrade fees for our Ursa Mini Pro customers. Um, the plan is that this is an entirely free download for people today. Will this codec be made internally available into other Blackmagic cameras, or at the moment, as far as I understand, is only the Ursa Mini Pro? From today, it's the Ursa Mini Pro 4.6, but what we are going to do is actually release that for the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and other cameras as well. Um, because this is a codec, um, a raw file type that we've been working on for the last two and a half years, over the course of the last two and a half years, all of those cameras have been considered for, for this Blackmagic RAW. So we'll certainly have it in the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, and then beyond that, we could potentially roll that out for the other Ursa Mini cameras as well. Lovely. That uh, sounds really nice. Uh, now, I have a question in terms of resolutions. Now, RAW is RAW. You can shoot 4.6K and then have your own deliverable. But are there any specific uh, resolutions supported with Blackmagic RAW? Yeah, so Blackmagic RAW will go everything all the way up to um, 4.6, all the way down to HD. Now, the, the other nice thing about that, too, is that um, traditional Ultra HD, if you were to look at that in terms of data rates, um, probably the best way to equate that is in terms of time and file size. If we were to take a 256 gig card, 
and put that into our camera and record Blackmagic Raw um, at say three to one compression. You're looking at around about 23 minutes on that card. But if I went to 12 to one, you'll be looking at around about 92 minutes. So you're talking about a 12 bit raw file that can record 92 minutes worth of footage at Ultra HD um, on that 256 gig card. Okay, hey, that's very impressive. Now, are there any adjustable compressions similar to other codecs of companies that shall remain nameless? Or is it basically a you know one or two options? I'm not quite on board with that. So you have multiple options. So in the settings of the camera, you have an option for constant bit rate and constant quality. If you choose constant bit rate, you can choose it 3 to 1, 5 to 1, 8 to 1, and 12 to 1. If you choose constant quality, it will vary depending upon what you're filming. Constant quality is based more for those who may be on as um, limited by the size of the files. Um, so the actual camera will adjust that, that bit rate based upon what it's filming. Um, but there are many options in there and, and those data rates obviously vary on constant bit rate. So that if you're looking at, you know, say 12 to 1, you're looking at you know, an incredibly small bit rate, something like 32 megabits per second at 12 to 1. It oh, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I believe you have something, one more thing about DaVinci Resolve customers. Yeah, so anybody who has DaVinci Resolve can download 15.1 today. 15.1 has all of the features for Blackmagic RAW, so all the support for Blackmagic RAW. Um, you'll see that when you go into the color page, there is a camera icon. If you click on the camera icon, that will give you all of the parameters um, to adjust for Blackmagic RAW. Um, that's a full release, it's not a beta release, so if you want to put that into production straight away, it's available today for any customer with, with DaVinci Resolve. Well, thank you so much, Stuart. Very impressive, and stay tuned for more videos from IBC 2018.